I was raised to be a people pleaser by my people pleasing mom. It's not her fault. That's how she is. And I'm fine with that. But when I met Jay, he taught me that people pleasing is not a good idea. And our first Christmas together was December 2018. And he told me to stop being a people pleaser and stop feeling obligated to my family when I didn't want to do something. And I loved this idea because I had been raised to be such a people pleaser and care about what so many people thought, but I was sick and tired of it. Jay was so wonderful and helped me start to make progress on that. You'll notice I didn't say cured because I still have some issues with that, which is why we're going to talk today with you about people pleasing. So Jay, why do so many people really give a crap about what other people think? Mostly because they've been trained like dogs since birth. <laughs> okay. I know I was, and it was like with no hate, but can you... Elaborate a little more on that, please. How do you train a dog? All right. Well, usually you just do something unpleasant to them when they behave in ways you don't prefer. And then you do something rewarding or pleasant to them when they behave in ways you do prefer. This is how people treat their kids. Right. Okay. You think we're supposed to raise powerful, empowered, happy, healthy human beings the same way you train a dog? No. But that's what people do. You did it with your own kids. I taught them to be people pleasers too by accident because that's what I was taught. There's a huge amount of people out there that have issues with this on different levels of people pleasing. But all of them have been trained by their parents? Yeah, like dogs. I don't think they're going to like that. No one will. Like that's why dogs. I keep saying it. You shouldn't like it. Yeah. It's a terrible way to raise a child. But we don't have alternative ways. No one really has explored alternative ways of raising children. Very few parents have done this. Their go-to is to raise their children the same way they would train a puppy until their kid behaves the way they want. I had the same problem. I was a people pleaser when I was a kid. I was a super people pleaser. I was the good boy, the good kid, the the eldest child, the most well-behaved, the top marks in school and everything for, for massive amounts of my life. Even in school, I'd use all my talents and the skills to make other people happy and win friendship because I got something beneficial to me when I did it and I would lose friends when I didn't. I get it. Okay. I couldn't so... just be myself. Literally everyone around me, my parents, my peers, my teachers, all punished me when I behaved in ways they didn't prefer and rewarded me in when I behaved in ways that they did prefer. Not one of them stopped to think, hey, maybe I should let this kid be how he wants to be. Maybe he needs to be that kind of child. Maybe he needs to go through a phase like that. Maybe I should encourage him to do what he wants and not judge him. Every single one of them was like, no, I judge this behavior. Not good. I'm punishing this kid. Okay. That's how you raise a puppy. And do you honestly think that's going to raise an empowered, healthy human being who has a clear sense of themselves and doesn't people please? No. Right. It's a surefire way to train a people pleaser. Could you think of a better way to train a people pleaser? Reward them when they please you and punish them when they don't. No. Literally it's... the best way to train right. a people pleaser. Yeah. So what are you going to create as a parent? What child are you going to create? A people pleasing child. There you go. I did. And I, I didn't realize that's what I was doing. I didn't realize it was done to me as well. And even to this day, there are, are things my mother refuses to talk to family, other family members about my addiction. There are people in my family that don't even know that I was an addict. They have no idea of what happened in my life, which I just don't understand. But I guess when you really care about what other people think, and you are a people pleaser to that extent, then yeah, you'll hide anything and everything. Yeah, you don't want to risk upsetting someone. Yeah. So you get multiple generations of people who would rather crush their own dreams, stomp out what's in their heart, and sacrifice anything they've ever believed in than upset others. Their highest priority is people pleasing. Yeah. Pretty messed up. So I just want to say real quick to my kids, all three of you, I love you and I'm sorry that I raised you to care so much about what other people think or even to care what I think really. Yeah. And we encourage you to do what's in your heart, yeah. even if it's stuff either of us wouldn't approve of. Yeah. Do what's in your heart. No judgment, no punishment. Yeah. Well, there's so many people we've worked with in the past. Their main issue over not being able to run a business and be successful and make the money they want to make. This is the one thing that stood in their way. And I thought it was other things. But while you were talking, I realized all those other things were really boiled down to as people pleasing. 
Yeah, they don't care more about what someone else thought or what someone else was going to say. And so recently I cut ties with somebody. She was an OnlyFans girl or I was helping her. But I cut ties with her because I've been telling her from a year almost now how to improve and succeed. I'd had enough. And I didn't want to people please with her and just be gentle. So I was honest and, and she acted like I murdered her firstborn, which all I said was the truth was you need to get your mental health together and you need to stop caring what other people think. And she acted like it was like a horrible thing. But in the past, I had been candy coating this basic thing. Sure. You went from people pleasing to speaking your truth. People hate that. Join the club. Everyone hates it when I speak the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it doesn't please anybody because the truth is is medicine, right? It's like no one does cartwheels for the taste of medicine. Very few people are up for that. The truth is medicine. When you tell people the truth, it's going to help them and it's going to help you. The truth always helps as long as you do it with as much love as possible. But it's still going to be less pleasant to them than the candy coated lies you've been feeding. So, of course, this happened. She would still rather me say it with candy coated lies than the truth. Sure, she'd still rather you be a people pleaser just like her because she does the same thing with her people. And I think that you just really hit the nail on the head right there. People pleaser expects other people pleasers to remain the same because then that changes them. Like she has to look at what she's saying to me too and what she's thinking if I change my pattern. Yeah, that's why she's not going to stop talking to us. I'm laughing because he's- I've busted my ass to help this girl. Yeah, I've done nothing but good thing. And then a couple things didn't go the way exactly the way she wanted it. And she's like, oh, I'm out. And it's like, all right, that's cool. Yeah. But it's your loss, man. I was a fountain of value. Yes. If you can't handle me how I am and speaking my truth and doing what's right for me and taking self-care time when I need it and you need me to work for you and grind it out and sacrifice and I didn't do it the way you wanted to do it, fine, lose it on me. I'm not here to please you. I'm not some people pleaser. No. I give the value that I can. And if it's appreciated, great. And if it's not appreciated, that's fine. I can, I can dip. Yeah. Well, you've taught me to set those boundaries that upset other people. And recently I did it with someone close to us. I set a boundary. She did not like it, but I don't know what her thought process. We'd not ever discussed it. But since then she's respected my boundaries and we've gotten closer since, since then. And I won't lie, it felt really uncomfortable for me. Because you're used to people pleasing. Yeah. It, it felt really uncomfortable to say to her, this is my boundary and I'm sorry I'm not doing that. And that's it. And that day I felt really uncomfortable. I encourage you not to. I know. And uh, well, yeah, I didn't like, oh, think about it all no, the time. You should be celebrating it. I know. If I if it happened today with the practice we've been doing too, I would be celebrating and looking more positive towards it. And at the time I did, I but I still there's still that oh, <laughs> oh my god. But it was like two days later when she like came to me it was completely different. And so since then it's been such a great day. Yeah, absolutely. I've I've set boundaries with many people while homeless. And yes. walk out into the cold, shelterless wilderland rather than people please for them. Oh, so this is awesome. I want to add this in here. Okay. And it sets them straight every time. Yeah. It's a win every time. Human beings should be celebrating when anyone sets an authentic boundary for themselves. Even if it isn't pleasant or you don't prefer it or they're not behaving the way you like. If they're setting an authentic boundary, you best be cheering that on because that's what the world needs more of. Yeah, I agree. So- in the middle of a snowstorm on Christmas Eve, I think, yep. right? Christmas Eve. You were staying with a friend. Oh, no, this is a different time. On Christmas Eve, it was with my uncle and his girlfriend. Okay. The other time was just a winter day. Well, regardless, I want to know house. how many people watching or listening, if they were homeless and it was snowing outside and freezing cold, would they have the balls to say, you cross my boundary, I'm out of here? Because you know what? Now I might, but before any of my journey, no way. Yeah, you would have crammed your boundaries down, repressed your true feelings, yes. put up with the bullshit, and stayed in that environment. Yes. Oh, okay, and compromised. But I wouldn't compromise. Yeah. And I know that I'll survive and I'll thrive and I'll do better following my heart and putting my foot down and setting a boundary than I will compromising and staying in that shelter. But people would rather have shelter than their dreams. They'd rather have shelter than their truth. They'd rather have shelter 
and their boundaries, period. And and some people might think you're crazy for that. Like, oh my God, I would never. I think they're but... crazy for stomping on their dreams for some paltry shelter. You know how many human beings live without shelter for a day, a week, a month? I did it for two and a half years. You want to stomp out your dreams for that because you can't spend one night outside? Our cave ancestors would be rolling in their graves. Yes, they would. What happened they would. to you? What's with the station of the entire planet? Y'all can't handle a single day of nature? Okay. Guess go watch some more Bear Grylls and curl up with some popcorn and compromise your dreams. There you go. Well, I think it's pretty badass whenever we talk about that story or the both times. Like, to have clear boundaries and to say, I'm not people pleasing anybody and don't just, like, walk out into the cold like that with nowhere to go. That's some, that's badass. That's super hard for. I aspire to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> yeah, well, it takes practice. I didn't just wake up and do it. No, I know. Yeah. You you practice with small things. I walked out of an interview with a journalist who was stepping over some lines. Mm -hmm. I said no to a job or to overtime or whatever, right? You, say, you start saying no and setting boundaries with the little things. No, I'm not going to people please in this area. I've already helped you move for 12 hours straight and you were late to your own move. So now I have to go. I have things to do. I'm sorry. And we were clear that it was like to a certain time before beforehand. So yeah, you make total sense. Yeah, I helped and you move and I didn't even get the pizza party at the end. I'm not taking from you. I'm helping. And now I'm setting a boundary for my own personal health and sanity. Yeah. You could be happy for the free help or you could be a pansy entitled little shit. And then not talk to us ever again because it didn't go the way you wanted it to go. You didn't. We didn't do what you wanted us to do. So. Whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm better off without someone like that. Agreed. Everyone wins when you set a boundary. You also turned down three hundred dollars when you were homeless. Yeah, I turned down a thousand recently. Yeah, yeah, but you did. But you, somebody offered us money and you turned it down. And it wasn't just three hundred dollars. It was three hundred dollars and like major connections to like a whole new world. I was just gonna say it was more than that too. It was yeah. I, yeah, and it worked out again. I think it's really cool, and I think a lot of people could learn from you on this. This is why I wanted to talk about it. So I kind of mentioned it a little bit in my intro. Because I'm not perfect at this. I've come way a long way from where I was. Yes. But I'm still at like step three, y'all. <laughs> it's taken me a long time to get here because I really cared so hard and for so long what other people think about me, about us, about like you. And it's just silly. And, and now that I'm, I've been experimenting more and practicing more with stating my, my boundaries and for to see people recognize them. So there's three people in my life in the last two weeks that have said to me, oh, I know you don't like this or I know you don't do that and respected it and it felt so good. Yeah, and they would have never known those things about you or your preferences or your schedule or how you like to operate mm -hmm. unless you set the boundary the first time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever heard the phrase, we train others how to treat us. But that's a big part of boundary setting. Mm -hmm. If you set no boundaries and go to people please all the time, you're training people to treat you like a doormat and take advantage of you and walk all over your boundaries because they can't even see them. How could they see them? You hide them all the time instead of kindly, calmly, firmly putting them up for people to see. And as soon as you do that once or twice, people get it. Okay, don't ask Sin for that. Don't mess with her on that day. That's her thing. Her schedule is like this. And they just respect the boundary, but they can't respect something that people pleasers keep hidden all the time. Yeah, and especially if it's other people pleasers, they don't understand before they're ready anyway. They don't understand what I would say or if someone says, I can't that day because of this. I can this day because of that. Because they would automatically say, sure, yeah, because I was like, that's why not. Like you asked me something next Thursday at 4 p.m. Sure, without looking at my schedule, without looking at my calendar. And then as we started to grow and, and have more interviews and be on more guests, uh, guests on other podcasts, Cat, and then I have a side gig thing going on and like I can't do that any anymore I it's time to like set my boundaries and, and and say what is important to me and what's not and if like if you had asked me ahead of time would that be difficult I would have said yes but when it came down to it and saying it like I felt so good to say my boundaries and what I would stand for and wouldn't 
And then when they repeated them back to me later at another time, I was just right. I said to you, oh, it feels so good. It feels so nice. And it really did. So thank you for teaching me this and for helping me. Yeah, my pleasure. It makes total sense. Nature will make sure you feel good when you set a boundary because nature knows it, the earth needs authentic individuals who have boundaries and their own hopes and dreams and their own preferences. It's how the species evolves. And if we had a whole bunch of robot automatons who just people pleased left and right, it wouldn't really help or serve humanity. So you're going to get that rewarding, happy, joyful feeling when you follow your heart, speak your truth, set your boundary and let the chips fall where they may. Of course, it feels good. Right. And, you know, I totally agree. This is super helpful. And the the more I practice, the easier it gets. So realization, our do you have trouble with people pleasing? And if you do, are you open to practice with me? I'm happy to practice with you. Let's talk about it in the comments or you can email me and I'll help you because I could use a friend on this journey too besides Jay because he's like at step 5,000 million with this. And I'm like step three. So <laughs> she was so good at it. Like you really are. Okay, so people pleasers tend to be quite empathetic to other people's feelings. And I think this is a beautiful thing. When people understand others' feelings and understand their needs and their wants. Is there a way that we can make people pleasing positive and work for us to help us and others? Great question. And the answer is, of course, absolutely. Being in tune with the feelings of others and others' wants and hopes and dreams and desires is, of course, a valuable thing. Being clueless and ignorant of them, not as valuable. But it's super easy to go overboard with that and start rearranging your life around other people's feelings or even the imagined feelings you think they're feeling. It's kind of like having a stove that you always turn up to 10 for every dish you cook. This is an abuse of the tool. This is not how you use such a valuable appliance. A stove is valuable. You can do a lot of great things with it, but not if you misuse it. Similarly, having empathy or being able to read others is a valuable tool, but not if you misuse it. To use it properly, you must have enough self-care and self-awareness and personal boundaries of your own taken care of first. That must be the priority. If you filled up your cup, and you've taken care of yourself and you've set all the boundaries that need to be set from that point, you're then free to go and fulfill the desires of others. It's great to be a valuable human being who fulfills the desires of others and helps them feel better, right. but never at the cost of your own feelings, never at the cost of your own self-care, never at the cost of your own personal boundaries. Right. You did not come to earth to crush and suppress every personal boundary or even any personal boundary in favor of others. They're their own people. They have their own lives. They have their own tools and ideas and life and resources. Their feelings are their own and they're responsible for those feelings. And those feelings are guiding them. Those feelings are guiding them towards solutions. If they get in tune with their own feelings, they can tell when they're thinking negative thoughts. They can tell when they're having a bad mood. They can tell when they're viewing a situation incorrectly or in a way that doesn't serve them. If you are playing God and running around like waving a magic wand and people pleasing everybody's feelings away, you're just hurting them. Yes. And you're hurting yourself. It's true. So yeah, it's great to have this ability, but you got to practice using it well. And in this day and age, I ain't seen nobody practicing using it well. <laughs> I mean, more and more people. More and more people, yeah. You get my point. Well, because service really matters to me, right? And like helping people and serving people. And I love helping more than anything. Well, let me interrupt, though, because just like last episode, when you were confused about what love is because you were taught love from people who don't know love, mm -hmm. you've also learned service from people who don't know service. Most people say, oh, I, I like to serve others. It's like, you don't even know what that means. You have no clue. You can't serve others from a place of sacrifice when your cup is, is empty, when you're not nourished. If you haven't set personal boundaries for yourself and you don't feel like a whole cared for person, any service you give to others is just harm. Like I showed you briefly, and I'll do it more later, how people pleasing just hurts the people you're trying to help. They need the boundaries. They need to see them. They need to see the line in the sand, your personal boundaries, so they can know what not to cross. So they can treat you like an individual. Oh, with my spouse, it's fine to pee with the bathroom door open. With my boss, there's a boundary and I should probably not mess with that. 
people need to see the boundaries. If they couldn't see that, they would do the same behavior with the boss that they do at home. Right. That's messed up. Well, actually, that's that reminds me of one of the three that I mentioned earlier, the three people close to me that recognize my boundary. One of the things she said to me was, I want to be like that too. So I think speaking up and, and stating your boundaries to other people who are also people pleasers, this shows them what is possible. Yeah, it inspires them to set their own boundaries and stop being people pleasers. Yes. Some people even say it gives them permission. But yeah, it, it does. the point is, it's helpful every time. And we all should celebrate when other human beings are setting boundaries. And if you mm -hmm. catch someone who never sets boundaries and is always people pleasing, call them out. Show them a better way. Mm -hmm. Definitely don't feed that people pleasing addiction. Right. Don't reward them when they please you every two seconds. Tell them to do what they want, mm -hmm. whether it helps you or not. Yeah. Well, a, a week later, after her and I had that conversation, we were talking about someone, something else. And, and she told me how she did the same thing with someone else. There you go. And I was like, yes. good. And I made a big deal of it. And I celebrated yeah. with her and I was so glad. But I want to come back to what you what you just said, too, because one of the things that I really love about you and that I think is pretty badass, too, is how even if it doesn't work for you, even if it's something you don't prefer, even if it's something you don't want, if I want something or I want to do something or go somewhere or whatever, you're you're totally fine with it. You're not you don't take advantage of my people, please, because with you, it's like at the max. It makes me feel really good and, and it's a really good way to teach me how to set my boundaries by not expecting or demanding or saying to me, I don't want you to do that because I don't like it. You're like, that's fine. Even if it's not my preference, you can do whatever or say whatever or go wherever. Like, I think this is really nice. I think it's it's a beautiful way to help me. Yeah, because it's the opposite of what almost every parent does. Yeah. Me saying do whatever is in your heart and I'm not going to reward or punish it. I'm not going to judge it or have a giant conversation about it or give you the certain degree about it. I want you to do what's in your heart. In fact, there's very little, if anything, that I prefer more than other people doing what's in their heart, what they really want to do. And so this is a very helpful way to untrain a people pleaser. So of course you like it. Yeah, it's it's been it's been wonderful. And I've said it to my kids for the last few years that I've been here to them, like, well, I don't, it's not my preference, but do what you, what you want. My son recently uh, called me and said he wanted to change his name. Like my first instinct was to, ew, no, I, no, don't do that. But I stopped and I said, you know what? I don't really like it. I don't really prefer it, but it's your name. You have to live with it. Do whatever feels best for you. I bet he felt love. Yeah. And there was zero argument and no pushback. It was like, okay. And that was it. And it felt so good afterwards to not push my agenda or my feelings and thoughts on him. Because that's what was done to me. For, it's still being done to me. But not by you, but by my, my family. So yeah, like it's it's a really great way to, to teach the people pleaser how to, to be better about this and, and not putting that on them. So thank you so much. You're awesome. Like, you, you don't know by now that this man is awesome. I don't know what's wrong with you. Like, he can you know, totally change your life. We have an amazing book. It's called Eyes Wide Open Volume 1. It's the world's first self-help coffee table book. And it's like all this stuff and more. It's There's amazing things. Each each section each page is its own book basically and it's incredible and the artwork is all done by jay and it's it's just beautiful the link is in the description to buy it if you want it or if you want to talk to him one-on-one -on -one and get this kind of help like this is life-changing stuff you helped me just on every single in every single way possible if you really want to improve and you really want to get better like you need to talk to Jay, so just send me an email and I'll hook it up. Yay. <laughs> and I should mention, the book is a short, easy read, and it's gorgeous. It looks beautiful on a coffee table or a desk or a shelf, you name it. It's a gorgeous book. Uh, but really, the reason I even ever bring it up on the podcast, it's not even to necessarily like make sales and make money. No, it's we don't make a profit on it. 
no. you lose money on that book. Yeah. The reason why is because, especially now, like when, when I talk about like the things I've learned and how to progress, I want that for all of you. Like I genuinely want you guys to know what it feels like to let go of something so ingrained inside us, like people pleasing. I mean, there's a million other topics, but since this one is people pleasing, I'm talking about that. But money, health, like it doesn't matter. But the truth is, is I was a horrible, terrible person before you. And some people might say, oh, you made me do this. You made me do that. But you never did. All you did was talk to me and, and tell me all this stuff like that we're talking about now, just in private. And when I have those moments, like I just did right before I mentioned the book, it was like, I remember how difficult it was to say no to somebody. I know how difficult it was to be afraid of what my kids were going to wear or say because oh, someone might think I'm a terrible mother. Or, oh my God, someone's going to judge my kid's food or my what my kids are wearing or whatever. And they're going to, uh, you know, it's it's a reflection on me. But no, I don't care anymore. Like, you know? Yeah, it's a judgy world. You can't care about that stuff. No. And, and I've learned that, that everyone is going to judge you either way. If you do what they want, they judge you. If you do what they don't want, they judge you. So just do what you want. That's it. And you taught me that. So like that's why I, I plug the book and, and I talk about the coaching because I got that same thing and it was life changing. So I didn't mean to talk about it so long, but yeah, you're just awesome. Yeah. And then <laughs> I love you. they're getting it cheaper than you. You had to like say no to your fam and move across the country and give up everything and to study with the guru in Toronto or whatever. Yeah, yeah it's true. That's balls. Like you give me props all the time, but. You've done some pretty amazing stuff too. Thanks. You saw a good mentor or a good teacher or good lessons or something that could help you and you move towards it no matter what. And you did it during COVID when everything was closed and the airlines weren't letting anybody go. Yeah. I'm like, wouldn't catch me doing that. <laughs> yes. I mean, maybe. Well, I just knew I had to, to learn more because the bits that I got on the phone and in coaching and your in your work, this is incredible and it was Help me change, but I wanted more. So it was worth it. You can always read the website. <laughs> so people pleasing is a learned skill that we pick up from our parents, friends, family, teachers, media, etc. So can you give me another way or give us some tip of something of some sort to unlearn this ingrained skill? Another great question. And you unlearn it by replacing it with a different habit. And you build a habit the same way you build any habit, the same way you did it in the first place, with tiny baby steps over and over of the behavior that you want. Okay. Surely you've had a habit. Yeah, I've had lots of habits. Name it. Bad. Uh, well, I smoke weed. I don't have a morning routine. Okay. So was your morning routine always the same? No. So then you had one habit during the morning. And you eventually switched it to another habit. Yeah. What was your first habit and what did you switch it to? The first one was sleeping late. Okay. So you had a habit of sleeping late. Mm -hmm. And what did you switch it to? Waking up early. Okay. And how did you change that habit? Practicing with an alarm. Okay. So I could wake up early. Right. So what happened the first day that you decided to switch the habit? Oh, the first day was, it was rough. It wasn't the easiest. And what about the second day? It was easier. Third day? Easier. Fourth day? <laughs> it was no problem. Oh, so you didn't have any backslides or mishaps? You didn't start sleeping in again? Oh. Every single day you got better? That's impressive. I, I well, don't say that yet. But it sounded like <laughs> it. Apparently you nailed it the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth day. I nailed it the first week. And then the second week I backslid and it didn't sleep as late as I did before. But I did sleep later than I was the week I was crushing it. Right. This is how most habits go. You have an old habit. You set an intention to replace it with a new habit. You do okay. And then back to the old habit. Super common, super common behavior. But somehow you managed it. Now you wake up early. Yeah. So then what happened when you had that first slip up? It spoke really negatively about it. I didn't really give myself positive reinforcement. Like this is easy. I got this. It was more like, I had to get up early. I failed again. This sucks. I'm bad at this. This is hard. But you could have given yourself positive reinforcement. 
Oh, yeah. So then what happened? So that's what happened, actually. Once I had enough of sleeping, like waking up early and then backsliding to sleeping late, like it went on back and forth uh, until I got tired of it. And I was like, well, I had to make a decision. Like, I'm either going to be a late sleeper and stay up late, which was what I'd done my entire life up until that point. But a hardcore habit. But nothing ever got done the way I wanted to because I would stay up late. Yes, but I wouldn't get the work done that I did like when I woke up early. So then I made the decision that I was going to wake up early. And then I started speaking positively about it to myself. Like, I got this. This is easy. It's no big deal. If I go to bed early, then I can wake up early. And this is not hard. And I've done this before. And this kind of thing, I spoke more positively. And, and now it's, I don't have any trouble. But was it just the speaking or? Oh, it was the doing, too. I had to like do it every day consistently. And did you ever backslide again after that first week? Not after I got consistent. No, but before you got consistent. Oh, yes. Before I got consistent. So there was multiple yeah. backslides. Yes. So from what I can understand, you had a long time habit of sleeping in late. Mm -hmm. You set intentions and woke up early a few times, mm -hmm. then backslid a few times and felt shitty about it, mm -hmm. and then tackled it again and woke up early a few more times, and then backslid a few more times and mm -hmm. slept in a few more times and felt shitty about it again. And yeah. eventually you got fed up with that cycle mm -hmm. and you were like, that's it. I'm done. Never again. I got this. Mm -hmm. And you started waking up consistently and it got easier and easier over time. And then you never backslid again. Yes. So you successfully replaced your old habit of sleeping in with a new habit of waking up early. Yes. Okay. What about your heroin addiction, your heroin habit? Most people would say this is an even harder habit than sleeping in. How did it go? Did you replace it with something? Did you replace it with comfort it food? Did you replace with it with weed? Did you replace it with candy? We replaced it with being healthy. Candy. No, candy. Because uh, when you when you quit using drugs, you really crave the sweets for some reason. I don't really know the science behind it, but uh, so we kind of replaced the the drugs for candy every time we wanted drugs we would reach for candy and i ended up gaining a bunch of weight but so i decided to get clean and i would replace it with candy temporarily like i consciously knew okay. what i was doing and when the first day you decided that were you just done cold turkey from heroin or you had some backslides no i had a couple of backslides okay yeah right and when you had those backslides did you feel shitty again and yes. have negative self-talk yes. and i can't break this habit yes. And then did you eventually get fed up with that cycle of trying to break it and failing to break it and trying to break it and failing to break it? And then eventually you were like, I'm going to be consistent yes. with the candy from now on. Yes. No more heroin, candy only. Yes. And then after you made that decision, you got it. Consistent, consistent, consistent. Yes. And then never backslid. No, I'm not backslid since. Right. So do you see the pattern for replacing an old habit with a new habit? It seems exactly the same in every <laughs> habit of your life. If I pick another habit from your life, is it going to go the same way? Yes. <laughs> I was, that's why I giggles because it is the same. It's been the same way with almost every habit. Yeah. This is not rocket science. Like human beings have been building habits and replacing habits since the dawn of time. Okay. It's always the same way. Makes sense. You apply yourself. You keep trying, you persevere through the backslides, try not to hate on yourself for it. Eventually you get fed up with the backsliding and your failed attempts, and then you make a conscious intention decision to, to get this. And as soon as that decision happens, you start to get it consistently and you replace it with a new habit. And it happens for everyone with every habit and every time, everywhere, it's undeniable. And sometimes it has to start with really small baby steps. Like I'm just going to think differently the next time this topic comes up. And then you start to practice thinking differently. And it's like, okay, now I'm not so triggered every time it comes up. I've, I've caught myself a few times. I've, <laughs> I've count, I count to 10 now. Yeah. And it's like, are you over it? No, but I count to 10 now. And so then you baby step again. Now I'm going to change the counting to five. And now I'm going to change the counting to one. And now I'm not upset at all. And now I'm going to think positively about this topic. So either way, it's whether tiny little habits of how we think or bigger habits of the actions we're taking, it's the exact same process. Okay. That makes sense. And if you don't like my way, it's too simple of a solution or something, there are entire books about this. If someone's serious about changing a habit, whether it's the habit of people pleasing or the habit of smoking, they can look it up, right? There's books like Triggered or atomic habits or whatever. I'm sure a Google or an Amazon search will bring up hundreds. Yeah. People have dedicated their lives to teaching others how to change their habits. 
Yeah. But it's really not that tricky. And I want to just mention something for me personally. It may not work for you, but one of the things like I got tired of being sick and tired every single time. And then it was like a mental light switch. It was just like once the decision was made, that switch was flipped. And that was it. Well, that's what decisions are. A decision is a light switch. You either decide to do something or you don't decide to do something. If you have decided to do something, you haven't half decided to do something. What you've decided to do is think about something. Yeah. You decided to consider it or decided to mull it over. Decision is a binary thing. Choice is a binary thing. I choose this or I choose that. I don't sort of half kind of maybe sort of half choose. It's not even a thing. That's I chose to dither. I chose to think about it. I chose to sit on the sidelines. The choice was binary. Yes. You're choosing something all the time. This or that, love or fear, mm-hmm. move forward or stay stay put. So yeah, you're going to have that decision moment with every habit. Yeah. Like Yoda said, do or do not, there is no try. You're either people pleasing or you're not. You're either using drugs or you're not. You're either sleeping or you're not. Like there's, there's really no, and we as people put this language in of trying, can't not my fault like all these reasons but really the answer is you didn't flip the switch and make the choice and that's okay that's okay because i'm currently mid mid choice (laughs) but you're not but i'm not i know that's why i laugh because i'm not really uh it's a different totally different topic that does nothing to do with this but i'm working on something but really what i've been doing is thinking it through i've been thinking thinking it you've chosen to think about this but you haven't chosen to change this. You can always tell. You can always tell. And our audience can tell too. If they watch people in their own lives, they can talk to a kid and notice, has the kid chosen to do his homework or is he thinking about getting around to it? He's chosen to play his game or he's chosen to go to his friend. You can tell when they haven't really chosen to do something. Oh yeah, I'll clean my room. It's like, no, no, I, you haven't made the I've choice. I've chosen to put it off. Yeah. I've chosen to think about yeah. it. Yeah. You made choices, all right, but none of them were to clean your room. Yeah. And they can see when their boss has chosen to think about promoting them. Mm-hmm. But if the promotion's not in their account, like that decision is not made. Like they can feel it. That my boss isn't serious about this. He hasn't chosen to do this. Mm-hmm. And they can tell for themselves too. I've chosen to think about this or research it or talk positively about it or tell others I'm working on it, but I haven't chosen to do it. Because when you choose, you get that light bulb moment, that light switch moment, mm-hmm. and it's done, man. There might be some failures afterwards and some backslides, mm-hmm. but from that point on, it is done and you're going to get it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And and that's a good point too that you just made. Even when the switch flips, there's still there may be some issues, there may be some backslides, there may be, but there's no, I'm not I don't know, or maybe it's. I no, should just quit. I have to. Th- there's, there's. I'm going to make this work. Okay, this didn't work. How can I figure it out? And when you think about it, you think about how to make it more permanent versus how to know, quit. Yeah, how to quit, or I shouldn't do this. Yeah, that's a totally different thing. So Your ideas sure. and thought process is just okay. That didn't work. What can I do next? Okay, maybe if I do this, I have a creative solution. I need to talk to someone about this. You know what? I'm going to stay up and Google it. When I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to have a great solution. I can't wait to show you guys. I'm on it. Like I found 10,000 ways that didn't work. Thomas Edison style. It's, it's an attitude of, of this is already done. I've made the decision and now I'm just exploring solutions. It's very different than like, oh, it didn't work the first time. I guess it's not meant to be. I should probably quit. Maybe it was enough in the cards. I guess it's just not my personality. Like you're just looking for ways out. Yeah. So when you're on one side of the light switch, you'll take any way out. And people can tell that you haven't made a decision. Once you've made the decision, you're on the other side. Ways out don't even exist. And all you can see are alternate solutions. And it shows. And people can tell in your vibe. And you can definitely tell if you've made a decision or not. So if you want to change a habit and you're serious about it, make the decision and you will change it. And from then on, it's just working out solutions. Maybe you need to find a book about it. Maybe you need to practice. Maybe you need an alarm in the morning. Maybe you need to count to 10. I don't know what it is, but you're going to be on it finding solutions. And everyone's going to feel it. You're going to be like, man, this dude is on fire with that task. Yeah, exactly. All right, Rise Nation, are you ready to flip that switch from people pleasing? If you are, awesome. Let's talk about it in the comments. I love you. If you're not, that's okay. Maybe this podcast episode will help you move forward closer to flipping the switch planting seeds yeah we love it so 
I love helping people, right? And I don't want to stop helping people. And I care a lot. And sometimes I go above and beyond because I care. I go a little far. The other day or yesterday, I said, you know, set your time boundary so that you're not like open to your side thing all day. And I was like, yeah, okay. And and I thought about it after I left. I thought you're you're right. Like I, I have to set a time boundary. So how can we tell when it's like that we've given too much and it's time to set a boundary? Solid question. Well, similar to the last question, it's about practicing small steps. And what you need to practice is listening to your heart, knowing your truth, knowing what makes you happy and what thrills you, and knowing what drains you and depletes you. Setting a boundary is basically like drawing a line that says, this line can't be crossed or it will deplete my energy as a human. It will drain me. It will not enliven me. It will not lift me up. It will not be beneficial. And it's going to ultimately harm both of us because humans without boundaries or with boundaries that can just be crossed willy-nilly are write-offs. Like they're basically not humans at all. They're step for wives or something. I don't know what they are, right? They just people please and they don't have a personality of their own. They're not individuals. They don't have preferences, hopes, dreams, or desires. And even if they do, those get stomped and squashed immediately the second someone wants something or feels bad or whatever it is. So a boundary is basically saying, this is what makes me a whole human being. Mm -hmm. It can't be crossed. For some people, that boundary is I only work at night. Night shift people are like this. That's their thing. Right. I'm not going to try and cross that boundary and mess with them. Right. For other people, the boundary is I'm not giving up my game. Esports athletes are like this. I don't want to mess with an esports athlete's passion for their game or their schedule for their game. Mm -hmm. And you don't know who you're dealing with. Your child could be a future esports e star. You don't know. So you have to let people set their boundaries. Mm -hmm. If it's a true boundary from their heart, it'll be clear and we'll know and they'll speak up and so on. So since a boundary is this line that says, this is who I am, at least for now at this phase in my life, and it must be respected, how are you ever going to set one if you don't know who you are and you haven't tuned into your heart and you haven't practiced listening to your intuition and you're out of touch with your hopes and dreams and you can't tell what makes you come alive or what depletes you. If you're all screwed up and haywire and you can't tell any of this stuff apart, how are you ever going to set a boundary? It's ridiculous. You couldn't possibly set a boundary if you haven't done the, the self-work first. That's really good. I, I didn't even think about that. Like, well, it makes sense now why I've been able to set boundaries now versus why I couldn't before. <laughs> Oh my God, that's why. Okay, it makes sense. So like the people I had the most difficult time setting boundaries with are my family. And so recently we le I learned about like the things passed on to our family, from our parents, from our mothers. And, and so since then I've like been able to set boundaries easier and, and learn better now I understand why because I didn't really know any of that stuff I didn't understand so I couldn't learn I couldn't set a boundary with these people that's so oh my god thank you yeah my pleasure <laughs> oh okay you're the best <laughs> I love when I have these moments especially on camera all right so Without knowing who we are, with without being aware of what we want and need, we can't set boundaries because we don't know ourselves. So we can't set them with other people, right? And this is correct. This is what you were saying. Absolutely. Okay. It's step one. You can't make an awesome meal for someone else unless you know how to operate the stove. And you can't operate the stove unless you know where it plugs in. Like well, you wheel that new appliance in, you're like excited to use it. Yeah. You, there's an order to these things. You have to know, plug it in first, then turn the burner to an appropriate amount second. And then finally, you can cook the great meal. Same for setting a boundary. It starts way back with knowing who you are and knowing what you stand for and knowing what you believe in and knowing what makes your heart sing and knowing what makes you passionate and knowing what energizes you and knowing what depletes you. This is really it. That. Every single little action you take throughout the day will either energize you or deplete you. It's never neutral. Nature is not like this. Humanity is not like this. Evolution is not like this. Every choice is inching you towards love or fear, 
towards energizing or depletion. Mm -hmm. If you notice that saying yes to family member X or family member Y depletes you, mm -hmm. now you know your boundary. Now you know who you are in that area. And now you can set a boundary. If you notice that giving into peer pressure and staying out late and partying d depletes you, now you know who you are. Now you know what's going to energize you and you know what depletes you. And so you can choose the opposite path. I'm going to stay home, not give into peer pressure, and I'm going to take care of myself. Now I'm more energized. Now you can set a boundary the next time someone invites you out. But most people haven't even done this step. So setting a boundary becomes almost impossible for them the same way it would be almost impossible to cook a meal with an unplugged stove. Knowing who you are is the juice or the power for boundary setting. If you don't have the juice or the power, good luck setting boundaries. Yeah. And so this is what people need to practice. And they need to practice it way more often with way more choices in the day. Because almost everybody is compromising their own personal boundaries and their own personal passions hundreds and thousands of times a day. They're choosing the depleting choice rather than the energizing choice. And if we take a second, a minute, an hour, a day to ourselves to think things through and sit with things and ask ourselves, how did that make us feel? Did it energize us? Did it deplete us? Things start to become very clear. But even that, how often are people going to isolate themselves for a day or a weekend or a week and, and really get to know themselves? Practically never. I really want them to. I would love it. It's going to change their lives. They'll start to be energized. They'll know who they are. They can start setting boundaries. It's a huge chain reaction. They start to blossom and thrive and shine. They get to live the life that they want on their terms. Oh, it's so amazing. But will they? Please? I think they will. I really believe that Good. the people watching... Our audience will. Our audience is amazing. I don't know about and, everybody and come else. Come on, y'all. Rise Asian, tell me in the comments. I want to know, like, what do you think? Do you think that, like, no one ever, like, is going to do this? Or we're all just growing and healing and we're getting better at this? I want to know your thoughts on this, please. Um, because I think that the world is getting better. And I think that the more we put out content like this and the more we do have our these amazing conversations and share with the world, the more people are going to learn and say, hey, I didn't know that. I want to do that because that's what happened to me. Like, I didn't know any of this stuff. And you just saw me have this aha moment when I realized that without really tapping into the things I want, like, Okay, I had some self-awareness about other things, but there's so much about me that I don't really know and understand, but I'm I'm learning and, and understanding that it's okay to tell my family no or to say I'm happier here. It's like they can react how they want, but that's my truth and, and I'm setting boundaries and I'm not going to cross them and backslide because this is really what I want and I only have one life as do you. And so you should live it the way you want. I totally agree. I was just poking the bear a little bit to get them riled up. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's what he does. But that's good. That's good. Because if you don't, if we don't do this, if we don't poke the bear and get them to think and plant seeds, who the hell else is gonna? Because all these, all these years, people have been teaching us to be people pleasers and they don't want us to stop because then they can't use us and that make us do what they want us to do. I don't know about you guys, but I'm tired of doing things because of other people or not doing things because someone might not like it. No, like I don't want to spend the rest of my years on this earth doing things for other people that they like, but I hate. No, so forget it. I'm done with that. Yeah, just do what you like and the other people who like it as well will be attracted to you and join you. You don't have to do things you hate but other people like just go do what you like and there are eight billion people the right ones are gonna find you yes. yeah. and it doesn't have to be your family or your boss or your friends or your ex or whatever yeah see the thing there are new people yeah that exist you're right they will find you <laughs> and so for me being latina it's been ingrained in my head that family is everything well Family are just other human beings, probably as broken and fucked up as you are or were. And and that's it. Like, they're not special in any way. If you were born into an orphanage, the orphanage would be your family yes. and you would feel the exact same. But they're not special either. They're just a random orphanage. Like, yeah. they're just human beings doing the best they can. And if it suits you and they're inspiring to you, great. Hang around them. If they're mm -hmm. not and they deplete you, set some boundaries move away a little bit because they're not magic. They're not special. They're not yeah. mystical. 
They're not some kind of all-powerful God-tier support system that will make you thrive. They're just random groups of humans, like an orphanage. Well, Teal Swan, actually, I commented on a video about this very same thing where she says, your family, family, they, they don't provide security if they make you feel bad, that family are people who support you and love you. And you can have family that abuses you and mistreats you and hurts you in many ways. But that doesn't mean you have to be dedicated to them and give your life up for them. You choose, you can choose your family and the people who love you are going to treat you right. They're going to make you feel good. You're going to enjoy being around them because family can be abusive. Family can mistreat us. And are you going to be dedicated and give up the things that you want for people like that? I'm not saying all family. I'm just saying just because someone's your family doesn't make them a good person, doesn't make them great. And, and if it doesn't feel good to be around them, then don't. And, and that said, I love my family very much. And I would take a bullet for too. any of them. They're awesome. I love them. Yeah. But I don't want to live with them. Well, that's fine. That's your personal boundary. Then. Live where you want to live. You're a grown woman. The point is, it's real simple. Labels aside, call them family, call them friends, call them acquaintances, call them blood. Call them whatever you want. Your heart knows which people on the planet you are meant to be spending time with. And it tells you very loudly and very clearly, if you're paying attention, by whether those people energize you for the most part or drain you and deplete you for the most part. It's very easy to tell. And if it's a close call, then why are you settling for someone who's barely past neutral, who barely energizes you? Why? Why would you settle for that? Don't you deserve someone who fully energizes you and majorly energizes you and energizes you most of the time? Thank you. So I don't care who you spend time with. I honestly don't. You love your family. You think they're the greatest. You spend time with them all the time. I don't care. As long as it energizes you. Yes. You want to spend time with just friends or peer groups or some gang? Go ahead. I don't care as long as it energizes you. I care that you are an energized person who feels happy and alive when you're interacting with others. And you can only do that by setting boundaries and being your own person and not being a robot, zombie, or doormat that caves to others as soon as they feel bad or you think they feel bad. And you can only set boundaries if you've taken time to get to know yourself and you've practiced every day not compromising on the little choices that deplete you or energize you. Because setting a boundary with another person is kind of a bigger choice. And so you'll never be good enough to set the boundary with other people if you haven't practiced on the smaller choices. Not that I believe things can be big or small, but it's a metaphor for teaching. So you told me in a conversation we had about this recently, and this will probably be the headline for the episode. You said that people pleasers are abusers. I'd really like for you to explain that piece. Oh, would it please you if I explained it? <laughs> it? It would. It would. Well, it's fine because I don't feel depleted by that choice. I'm happy to explain it. So it's a win-win. Okay. If I felt uncomfortable with it, I would draw a boundary and not answer. Fortunately, our goals align. Good. I'm glad. So mm -hmm. I'm dying to hear it. Yeah, I said it and I meant it. People pleasers are abusers. And I'm not pointing fingers because I was one of the worst. I told you, as a kid, I was a crazy people pleaser and my above average intel intelligence let me manipulate others. It let me manipulate situations. It let me be the ultimate people pleaser and make sure that I looked good in everyone's eyes and everyone got what they wanted and every feeling was cared for. I never dropped a plate. I never failed to juggle anything. I never got torn by having to please too many people at once. I was just fire. And so I felt like life was easy and I could do whatever and people would love me. That was her snake. That's terrible. That's not good. How is that good? I, I have no boundaries for myself. I become a doormat and a people pleaser for others. And now I think the way the world works is if you just please enough people, you'll somehow magically thrive. But all it does is make you a pawn of others. You'll never tap into your true destiny. Eventually, I ended up homeless. People were pleased, though. Like, I did everything I could. Even while homeless, I was people-pleasing. I'd go to an internet cafe and deliver on the project that I said I would. Instead of just being like, look, I need self-care. I can't do this project. It's ridiculous. No one in this position would ever do this. And you shouldn't even be asking me to do it. But I didn't because I had to people-please everybody and be productive and be a great member of society and never let anyone down. And I don't want to get punished and lose all my rewards and the what little support system I have. It just made me a terrible person. And 
it didn't help anyone else that I was people pleasing. It didn't help them. They needed to see boundaries. They needed to see that I have preferences and, and desires and I like to behave a certain way and I like to live my life my own way. I like to live a bit different than them because I'm not them, but they're not seeing it. They think I'm just like them. Everyone I met thought I was just like them. This guy thought I was a, a jock who loved to work out. That person thought I was a music hall nerd who loved all kinds of music. That person thought I was a, a geek or a tech head. That person thought I was a gamer. Because why? Because I, that's what I showed them. I hid the real me. And I people pleased like crazy. Yeah. It didn't help me and it didn't help them. Yeah. And anyone else doing the people pleasing is going to find out the same thing. Because human beings didn't come to earth to be robots or zombies or Stepford wives or doormats or pawns. They came to be their own person, their own authentic individual who has preferences, hopes, dreams, and boundaries. And they came to make those boundaries clear to others and then attract the tribe that's cool with that and to repel anyone who's not cool with that. If you have a boundary that you like to work at night, you need to make that clear and attract other people who are cool with it. Not just crush your dreams, work in the day to keep your family happy or whatever because yeah. they miss you or something. Yeah. Like, you need to do your thing and find people who are comfortable with that or who work around that or who cooperate with that, not the other way around. Yeah. And I also want to I want to add, like, you are not responsible for how other people feel. Even if you do something they don't like, I'll use me for an example. I moved to a different country and my mother eats it. Just drives her nuts. But that's those are her feelings. She has to learn to deal with where I live, whether it's with her or it's here. I can't fix her feelings. But imagine I go there, right? I go there and I live with her. And now she feels better because I live there. But now... I'm miserable. I'm unhappy. I'm miserable. I'm depressed. I'm anxious and suicidal again. Is it worth it because she's she's happier? No. Yeah, it's a great example and a great question. And ultimately, if you do what you want and what makes you happy, you will become another happy human on the earth. And we need all of those we can get. And as a happy human, you will attract other people. Happy humans are attractive and they attract tribes. You can build up a whole community around you. And then you could start flying your mom out to be with you or like flying out to visit her. Like all sorts of good things happen when you be your happy self and follow your dreams and start attracting your tribe and building your community. And you get more resources and more support. And suddenly you can make win-wins for everybody. Well, if someone really loves you and cares about you and you're happy and thriving, eventually they'll come on board because you set that boundary. And eventually when she sees I'm thriving and I bring her here and she can see where I'm living and how happy I am, then she will feel better. I know this. And she won't be able to until I'm happy and I'm setting boundaries and I'm letting go of pleasing her and everyone else. Yeah. And the thing about that is it's kind of a longer journey and people pleasers get used to instant gratification. I do something for someone else, even if it bothers me and I get a smile, I get something, I get some tiny little reward. And it's like, fine, if you want to settle for those instant gratification rewards, go ahead. But it's a recipe for disaster because your real rewards are coming a week later, a month later, a year later when you are a happy, thriving person. But that only comes from setting boundaries and stopping the people pleasing. Do you have anything else that you'd like to share with our wonderful audience? You're an individual. You're an authentic, real individual, which means you have your own boundaries. You are not exactly the same as anyone else. You're not exactly the same as your mom or your dad or your brother. There may be some similarities, but you are not the same. And your heart or your conscience or your inner voice or whatever you call it, your emotions are guiding you towards special individual particular behaviors and interactions that will energize you. And it's guiding you away from interactions that will deplete. And your job, your task on earth, your role in this game of life is to get good at that. You want to navigate it well. You want to nail it. You want to soar. And you can. It's easy. It just takes a little practice. You've got to practice standing up for yourself and setting your boundaries. And you might need time with yourself alone to figure out what's important to you. Do you want to be a smoker? 
Or do you want to be a super health nut? Or do you want to be something in between? Don't just do it because friends do it or because family want this or because doctors say that. Do it for you. There is room for everyone on this planet. Some people are meant to do that and be that and they will fulfill their role and they will feel good doing it. Other people are meant to avoid that and stay away from that. Other people are meant to try it for a phase and then ditch it and then pick it back up. I don't know what your path is, but you do. Your heart does and you'll find it if you have the courage to follow it. The world doesn't need boundaryless doormats and constant people pleasers. Those people are abusive. They're not serving and uplifting others the way they think they are. It would be far greater service to set a boundary, inspire others to do the same, give them permission to do the same, and to create a world where everyone is doing what's truly in their heart. And it starts with you here today. You got this. I believe in you. And that's why our book and this podcast are called Eyes Wide Open. Keep rising.